what's going on everybody today we're going to start a new part of our series where we're going to actually talk about tcg player essentially you might want to take some of this and turn it into this now some of you may have gotten too much sealed product from from rudy and you're like hey i want to unload it some of you may have so many singles that you're like, I just really want to sell on TCG Player. Like, how do you do it? Some of you are selling on TCG Player and you kind of want to take it to the next level. Well, who am I and, and why should you listen to me? Um, you know, my name's Steve, Philosopher Cards. I've been selling now for about a year or so on TCG Player. And, um, you know, I probably have roughly twenty to 30,000 orders out there at the moment. And of those twenty to 30,000 orders, I imagine that I have two, on average, per order, two cards, maybe three. TCG Player doesn't give you that information in detail, and um, we'll, we'll talk about that in another video as to why. Um, maybe I've sold between 60,000 and 90,000 cards in the past year that have flowed through my shop. Um, a lot of it I crack as seal, sealed. Some of it I purchase as, you know, collections. So if you have a collection, you want to sell it, reach out to me in the description below. Also, check out my Patreon. If it's not up yet, it'll be in the description below where I, I'm actually going to offer some consulting type, um, you know, I don't want to put it like a consulting based subscription where you can essentially work with me on a one on one basis and I'll answer questions and kind of help help get you started in TCG player. I imagine there's going to be 15 to 20 videos in the series where we're going to cover everything between shipping. How do you ship? TCG player direct. How, what does that look like? I'm actually preparing a direct shipment right now and I thought I'd show you guys this is what a thousand dollars in cardboard looks like through TCG player direct. So I have about 327 cards in here and I put this together on average, you know, two to three times a week. And um, a lot of it's new product that's like a lot of this is going to be um, Thunder Junction, which is what's out right now, as well as Fallout and, and such. But the main thing to, to keep in mind is like, why do you want to sell? What are you doing on TCG Player? Do you just want to like be able to unload cards at market price versus buy list? But keep in mind the fees with TCG Player are very high. You know, you have to have things prepared like you have envelopes, right? What are you going to do about, about stamps? You have a means to have address labels quickly prepared and and you know that you can print easily or you can have to write the address of each and every person do you have a good printer do you have have you looked into thermal printing you know have you have you done some of those things and all those questions we're going to go through what's what's sorting look like how do you sort how do you store speaking of how do i store all of that product and my current inventory is around fifteen thousand. i'm going to throw a picture right now up on the screen this is what my inventory system looks like it's under my desk okay so i have roughly i'd say twenty thousand cards in that at the moment maybe five thousand are unlisted um you know whether or not i'm going to list them later do them as as a lot which takes me to the next piece like should you sell it as a single should you sell it as a lot when do you sell on ebay when do you sell on tcg player when should you try facebook marketplace i'm going to try to go through and and talk about all of these strategies in the upcoming videos so i'm going to try to link as these videos grow back to um you know some sort of a playlist or something where folks can easily watch you know 15 through 20 videos on each one of the subjects and I'm going to try to have something like this where, you know, we can we can have a conversation, but also I can show you how it works, you know, how I'm actually going to be shipping. And this is, for example, if you can see on the screen here on the right. This is just a bunch of uh, fallout that I opened in a previous video. And I went through the process of intaking on scanning in all of these cards into my inventory. And now I need to put them away. But there's a couple things I want to talk about too uh, before we begin, and one is touches. And we'll talk. We'll have a whole video about bulk. But one thing you have to keep in mind when you're shipping a lot of cards: how many times do you think you touch a card like this when you when you ship it? Well, you touch it once when you open the box, and maybe you sorted it correctly the first time into the right foil pile. If you didn't, you got to touch it again to prepare it for intake. Then once it's an intake, you got to sort 
uh, and touch it again by set. You have to sort by set. Once it's sorted by set, you have to touch it again to sort it by alpha. Once it's sorted by alpha, you touch it again to sort it in the subcategory of alpha, you know, A, or in this case, S. So you have to sort all the S's. And you got to touch it one more time to put it away and integrate it into the inventory you already have. And then lastly, you have to touch it to sell it. So at some point, you have to say to yourself, all the time of touching these cards, and that's not even conditioning the card. These are just sell if you sell it near mint. So all these times of touching the card, is it worth it to you? You have to sit back and say, does this make sense for me to sell? Right? And I have a lot of six cents. Six cents is the lowest that I'll sell on my site. Um, but I have a lot there because sometimes there's a benefit to having bulk listed where it'll help with optimizing carts and what's called cop cart optimizer in TCG player. So we'll talk about that in future videos and, and how to take advantage of it. But sometimes it doesn't make sense for you to list bulk and you have to determine when, when does that not make sense and, and when should you try to sell it for bulk rates. Right, so there, there, there's multifaceted when it comes to selling cards and the strategy. You can't just list every single card on TCG Player. It's not the most effective thing to do. And then once you do have stuff listed on TCG Player, you have to say to yourself, what's, what's the best possible process for me to get this stuff out the door, touching it the least amount of time, you know, the fewest touches, the fastest. Right. If you also look at my customer service stats on on TCG Player, I have 100% positive feedback over 20,000 orders, all five stars over 20,000 orders, and and there's a reason for that. And I'm going to talk about customer service aspects of when do you provide refunds, uh, you know, what should you do when you find out you conditioned a card incorrectly when you go to ship, all of those types of strategies. Um, because it's very important that you keep good customer service because, you know, you want to make sure that your name and your brand is out there and that you're um, doing right by the customers and then in turn they're going to, they're rec you know, they're going to recommend you to others. So there's, there's so many things we can talk about. Um, you know, I think the first video in the series outside of this we'll call Prologue. Um, we're we're going to talk about when do you sell on TCG Player versus eBay? Um, then I'd say we're going to go into the different seller levels on TCG Player, seller level one through four, um, the different requirements of those, and when should you uh, expect to hit different levels, and, and why does TCG Player do that? Next, we'll talk about some shipping strategies of how do you get a card out the door? You know, when do you use non machinable? What's the rules for postage? Um, how much should you expect to cost if you add additional ounces? What's the most effective way to do that? So we're going to talk about that. We're, and, and probably with that, we're going to talk about, well, you know, let's say you have a $25 order. Do you provide tracking on that or not? And there's a particular strategy I've deployed for this um, earlier in, in the, we'll, we'll call it newness of my, of my shop versus now. What, do I did, what did I do when I got started and what am I doing now? Um, we're going to talk about inventory management, how I store in those boxes and those, you know, that you saw up on the screen earlier. How do I alphabetize? How do I, how do I integrate inventory? Um, we're going to talk about sorting. You know, how do I sort this quickly? Um, you know, and in turn, we'll, we'll also talk about Roka machines. Um, does it make sense for it? I've looked at every single one of the sorting machines out there, and I can tell you that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of all of them. I, I think that really it only makes sense under certain circumstances, and I want to talk about those circumstances. Um, we're going to talk about customer service at that point. Like I said, we're going to move into that. We're going to move into TCG Player Direct. So there's not a lot of content out there talking about TCG Player Direct and when should you be a direct seller versus when should you be a pro seller versus when should you just be a seller. You have to have the right amount of volume and you have to understand that the fees are, are enormous for TCG Player Direct. However, um, you are able to sell your cards at a premium, which is what I always price my cards at here on the channel. Um, I, I, I price them at a premium because, um, you know, it, it's convenient in many cases for people and it guarantees people to get certain kind of quality out of it. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your pro site. Um, we're going to eventually move into 
buy listing what how do you buy cards if you're a seller on tcg player and strategies for pricing then pricing your buy list pricing your your actual inventory i use a bot that prices my inventory several times a day so my bot at my level and this isn't going to be for everybody we're going to talk about that my level i use tcg direct low with a floor of market price right market price and i might even add a percent or two to that because i I am now established and people will pay a premium to buy from me because they know they're guaranteed they're going to get their cards quickly, they're going to get their cards in good condition, and people are willing to pay an extra buck or two premium to buy from me versus maybe a seller that only has 50 sales. Right? We're going to then talk about Cart Optimizer. Cart Optimizer is a way that TCG Player allows folks to purchase the best uh, price from a particular uh, you know, criteria that they've given. So for example, let's say you have 50 cards and you have 50 different sellers that you're buying those cards from. Card Optimizer will say, well, this seller has 35 of those if you're willing to sacrifice the set, if you're willing to sacrifice condition, etc. cetera, they have, they have a very large listing. We're gonna talk about what happens when you have a very large order that somebody orders for five bucks and you gotta ship 40 cards. What does that look like? Um, so there's there's a whole slew of different topics again I want to talk about. Um, there's not a lot of content out there because when I went to, to do research as I was starting up on this, I can tell you that I was not able to find the content out there. I, I couldn't figure out, do I want to do TCG Direct? Do I want to do store your product, which we're going to talk about that too? Do I want to do sort your product? Oops, they don't offer sort your product anymore, so that can't happen. So we're gonna we're gonna go through everything within TCG Player. We're gonna go through the Quicklist Scanner. There's a scanning tool, and this camera that you're seeing here, I use it to record my videos. I also use it to scan my product in. I flip over a white piece of paper and I start scanning after the videos are done, right? And then I start sorting, put it away, and then I'll price it and get everything loaded. And I'll actually go through, um, and, and and you guys can watch me do an intake after a video is over potentially. So yeah, this is what this looks like whenever you're shipping a, a direct order out. So this is my order to created today. Here's all my cards. It doesn't have the value of the card or anything. Anything over 25 needs sleeved. Um, we're gonna talk about that too, but I just wanted to show you guys, like I'm, I'm doing a large amount of volume. Um, I, I, I'm probably, I mean, I don't wanna brag, but my process is probably one of the best. Um, I can ship out a tremendous amount of product in very, very little time. Um, some of the weaknesses uh, that, that my, my shop has is I don't buy enough collections, right? I want to buy more collections and uh, oftentimes those buys are hard and, and you got to do a lot of work to sort through them if they're very large collections. So I, I open a lot of sealed, I don't do enough collections. That's one that's, that's a downside of my shop. Two, my buy list optimization on prices isn't, isn't that great. So I'm still obviously improving. I'm still I'm still getting better, but um, when it comes to an order coming in, picking that order, shipping that order, I can have an order shipped in an envelope. If you guys have ever ordered from me, you've seen these envelopes and you've seen how they come. Um, and I have I have shipping shields, and we're going to talk about this too in the, in the shipping. This in conjunction with this um, will protect your card. Good for the environment. You know, it's not plastic. And I don't use a lot of tape. I don't use a lot of tape, but that can happen under 30 seconds from the time of opening the order, hitting print on the packing slip and having everything shipped. I can have that done in, within 30 seconds and I can show you guys that too. I just don't want to show any personal information from, you know, somebody actually ordering the product. Um, I use something called stamps.com to make things a little bit easier, but we'll get into that. Uh, so comment write down what, what do you want to know first? I mean, I, I kind of want to go in that order But if I hear a lot of feedback from folks saying hey, I want to I want to hear this out of you first Or can you talk about this or that I, I'd be more than happy to I want to try to get one video a week of TCG player um, Information out to you guys and of this series. So I'm gonna start this series I'm going to hope to try to get something launching either every week or every other week at the same cadence, same day of the week, same time. Uh, just kind of like a, a, a show that you would normally watch on, on TV, to be honest. Um, but again, there's not a lot of content out there about this. And I can tell you, too, a lot of people on TCG Player aren't making a lot of money. 
right? So I enjoy cracking product. And in, in, in a lot of cases, I try to buy product that I believe I'm going to make money on. In many cases, I, I don't make some money on it. In many cases, I break even. And in many cases, I do well. Um, you know, I, I, I do hold and speculate on some product where you can see it behind me that um, everything in my shop is for sale at the right price, right? Some of the prices that I have now, nobody's going to pay. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, to bring out a series on this. I know a, a lot of people have reached out to me and said, hey, how do, you, how do you sell? How do you do this? Can you help me? And uh, it's, it's something I, I definitely want to transition the channel into where, you know, let's do some openings, but let's also have some conversations on how things are sold. We can talk about, um, you know, percentage fees and stuff, stuff like that. But if you buy stuff from Rudy, and I know a lot of you watching buy from Rudy, I, heck, I buy from Rudy, right? Um, but you say, hey, I don't have a, a sales ability to get these things out you know once i invest in him how do i move the product and you and you really have to look across a spectrum of ways and, and that's what this is going to be about this is going to be about how do you move product whether it's from rudy whether it's from stuff that's sitting in your basement that you want to turn into sorcery which a lot of folks are doing um just like like i said you know Folks that want to take their hobby to the next level or folks that want to actually, you know, get into business and, and, and do something like this. It's very challenging, very tedious, and you've got to enjoy it. But uh, again, if there's a patron below, check it out. Um, my patron account, I haven't quite set it up yet, but I plan to uh, in the coming weeks here and, and have a couple different offerings. Some for rip and ship, some for things like this, and um, maybe a, another offering here or there. I'll, uh, you'll see. You'll see. It'll, it'll be good. All right, guys. We'll talk soon.